Hello, welcome to another edition of Fed Boost. It's Tuesday. However, I'm going to share with us some of the things I learned last Sunday. I usually do it on Sunday. I did just one video and I wasn't able to finish it. Um, so <laughs> I'm going to share with you the rest of what I learned from um, church on Sunday. The topic by my father in the Lord, Reverend Shola Babalola, was turning your place of work to a missionary field. Turning your, turning your place of work to a missionary, to any, to, to a missionary field. Turn it, no, it's, it's dry. Turning your place of work to a missionary field. And... Uh, the scripture is based on Hebrews. There are so many scriptures, but some of them, the main one of the main ones is Hebrews one twelve. You know, Jeremiah. What I wrote down here, the scriptures I wrote down is Hebrews one twelve, um, Jeremiah one forty five, Isaiah forty nine one three, and Ephesians two ten. There, see, see, there is something God has prepared for me to do here on earth. That's what I wrote down. So I need to seek God to find out what that is. Every one of us, we have been sent on an assignment. Every single human being. Actually, I went out. I was somewhere today and I was just looking. It's a place where many people are coming and going. It's just like, wow, does these people even know how much God loves them? Do, you know, how many people here, like actually like, like three places that is like, you know, like a public place, so many people. And it's like how many people, it doesn't matter what the color of their skin is. It doesn't matter what height. It doesn't matter they were, they're male or female. It doesn't matter their age. It doesn't matter their background. So continue what I was talking to us about. So I, my mind was very like engaged in thinking how many of us really know how much God loves us. And there was something I was dealing with myself that the devil wanted to use to bring fear. And I can hear the Holy Spirit say, you know, like this is, this is, this situations of life is, is the field for us to practice the word of God, to believe God. Um, I must tell you that it took a while, like, you know, the Holy Spirit bringing some scriptures for me. I'm just telling you how my day, you know, because real life, you know, is, um, you know, at church, we get everything. We get equipped and stuff. Then we go into the field, into the daily life. That's what, you know, what do we do there? That there's basically, that's what my pastor taught us to, on Sunday. So, and I experienced some of that, you know, today. Not so I have to engage myself intentionally not to let the devil use situation inject fear into me. So, and also the main thing that we are learning that he taught us is, right, turning our place of work. Turning basically to me is everywhere we go, just like saying thank you or can I pray for you. You know, there's a way you behave I can, i'm not gonna i'm not here to tell you that oh i have always behave you know it's a lie but i have noticed to become more intentional just to look people like i, I had a place where i have to, i have a, a service was rendered for me to to me today and i engaged a lady and i you know she told me the meaning of her name is light and from there i engaged you know about the lord and stuff like that and family and 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 tell her thank you for the work that he, she she's doing. So in that contest, for instance, engaging and turning our workplace or whatever platform the Lord gave us to a mission field. That's what that's what our life is all about as believers. Our life is about we have been saved. Then we go and tell people how much Jesus loved them and do it lovingly like Christ would do. So there are the plans of God for us, right? So for me, I put here, plan your activities around 
around ministration, around evangelism, not just like, you know, quote unquote, that official evangelism, but around having a good um, attitude, being appreciative for me in everything. I mean, sometimes I snap, but majority of the time I have become intentional to be mindful that my attitude can stink or it can smell right you can smell a good aroma you know like when someone smells good you know it, it, there's something about it and when when someone doesn't smell good you know they it, it's like it it turns you off so i attitude is like that attitude our attitude can be s smelly either way it can smell good or it can smell bad it can sh you know it can cause people to just like you know don't want to deal with us or it can actually be inviting or it can be you know you that's exactly so i think it's important whether we are in 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 in, in our workplace or whether we are driving on the road or with, wherever we are whether we're in the store or whether we're where we're offering service or where people is offering service to us i think it's important that we should be mindful that every area of our life is a mission field you know not just but my pastor, my father in the Lord, zooming in on our workplaces, right? Marketplace. So the things he say that we must, what must motivate us as believers is not just the money. It, money shouldn't be number one, first of all. What must motivate us must be kingdom. Like our motivation must be kingdom driven. When we're looking for a job, when we're looking for work, when we're looking for career, um, it shouldn't be, oh, so I can make money. And I'm not saying you shouldn't make money. He didn't say you shouldn't make money. But it should must be kingdom driven. Where does God want me for such a time as this? In this season of my life? Because I'm talking to a spectrum of people from different, like, you know, young people. I was talking to a young man today, one of my son's friends. And I was, you know, his, and I was talking to him about life. Say how young people think they have all the time. I said, it's the devil that wants us to waste time. So everybody's in different spectrum. So wherever you are, wherever, you know, you are right now, what does God want you to do? To always keep abreast, to always be up to date with God, not just, you know, God move and we're still there. And many times we do that even in relationships. When God has released when there's no more grace, we get attached and get emotional. But I digress. Anyway, he said that the, let your motivation always be <clears throat> for let it be kingdom driven and not money or convenient driven. Kingdom driven, not money or convenient driven. So in other words, ensure that your greatest desire is to see the kingdom of God expand. Expansion of the kingdom of God. And and in, in, in the will of the Father, Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 and 10 comes to my mind where Jesus was telling to us when we pray, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. So it, it, we have to have a kingdom mindset consistently. Let the will of God be done in my lo life and let my life be uh, an avenue through which his will is expanded, expanded. So the second one is look to pick up any of the following roles. A trusting role when you are looking for a space to walk look for a trusting role like Nehemiah you know look for problem solving roles and then life touching roles and leadership roles again I'll say that um, look for trust role right where who you're working with they can trust you you have to under trust though and then problem solving human beings always appreciate when you make their life a little easier. The next one is life touching roles, right? Life touching role that you make a difference in the life of an individual. Then the, the, the fourth one is leadership role. So that is the first part of what, you know, I learned from this specific uh, topic of turning your place of work into a mission field, turning your place. So, we always have to have that at the back and the front and the center of our mind that our lives must align with the will of God. That why Jesus saved us and we're not in heaven yet is that the Holy Spirit will walk through us and within us and then shoot us out as arrows 
Psalm 127 comes to my mind. Is it Psalm 127? Yeah, I said children are like arrows, but we are the children of God and we are arrows that must.